Today I've got a fairly simple but very nice little number puzzle, and I'm going to present it as a fact, but we'll prove that this fact is true. And that is that all perfect squares never end in two odd numbers. Okay, well let's think our way through the starts of this before we look at a precise solution. So this seems to be true for sure. Notice if we take an even number and square it, then we'll get something that is even. And things that are even always end in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. But if they end in an even number, that means the last two digits cannot both be odd. So let's look at some odd perfect squares and see if those seem to follow this rule as well. And they do. Notice that 5 squared is 25. We have an even number and an odd number. 7 squared is 49. We have an even number and an odd number. 13 squared is 169. But we only care about the last two digits based off of the fact that we're trying to prove. And that ends in an even number and then an odd number. So yeah, this seems to be true. So now let's clean up the board and see if we can get a precise reason why that is true. Maybe try the solution if you want by yourself and we'll check in on the solution. So now that we've motivated our problem and looked at a few special simple cases, let's go ahead and look at a solution. So notice we only need to look at odd numbers by our first observation, and all odd numbers can be writ written in one of the following three forms. So notice I'll just write any odd number can be rewritten as 10 times m plus or minus 1. So that would be like 1 or 11 or 21 or 31 or 9, that's 10 minus 1, 19, 29, so on and so forth. Or 10m plus or minus 3, or finally 10m plus or minus 5. But here we just need to work with the plus 5 case because the minus 5 case will give us the same numbers. Obviously a different m value, but the same numbers. So notice 25 is 10 times 2 plus 5. It's also 10 times 3 minus 5. Again, that means that we don't need 10m plus or minus 5. We just need plus 5. And now we're going to work these into three separate cases. So we're going to look at each case one at a time. So let's start with this green case, which is when we have an odd number, which is of the form 10m plus or minus 1. So that means we've got 10m plus minus 1 squared. Let's see what we get when we square this out. So by standard rules for squaring a binomial, we'll have 100m squared, and then we'll have plus or minus 20 times m. And so that's because we've got 10m times negative 1, but we have two copies of that after foiling it out. And then finally, we'll have a plus 1. And now let's break this into two cases based on the plus or the minus. So let's start with the plus. So if we have a plus here, then the last two digits will only be governed by these two terms. This 100m squared won't contribute anything to the last two digits. And those last two digits will be exactly 20 times the ones digit of m plus one. But now 20 times the ones digit of m will definitely have a even number in the tens digit, which means this object ends in an even number and then in an odd number. So we're okay in this case. And now let's look at the next case. So that'll be the case when we have a minus sign here. Okay, but if we've got a minus sign here, then the last two digits will be built up of the following pieces. So we'll have 100 times the ones digit of m squared, and then minus 20 times the ones digit of m, and then plus one. But then through similar reasoning, 
this object will always end in an even number and then an odd number. And we can play a game just to test that if we want to, although it's not super necessary. So notice if m is, for instance, equal to 3, then this is going to end up being 100 times 9 minus 20 times 3 plus 1. So there we have 900 minus 60 plus 1. So that's going to give us 841. But obviously that ends in an even number and then an odd number. And then furthermore, we could do maybe one more little example here. What happens if m equals 5? Well, and that means we have 100 times 25 minus... 20 times 5 plus 1. That's going to be 2,500 minus 100. That's 2,400 plus 1. So that's 2,401. But again, looking at the last two digits, you see that we end in an even number and then an odd number. Okay, so now let's clean this up and maybe we'll do the last case and I'll leave this middle case as a homework problem. So we just looked at the details as to why a number like 10m plus or minus 1 squared always ends in an even number and then an odd number, and thus it does not end in two even numbers. Then similar strategy can be used here. I'll leave that as a little homework exercise. I think that'll be a good idea to get an idea for how this is working. And now we'll look at this final case when we have the number of the form 10m plus 5. So that means we need to square that 10m plus 5 squared. This actually works out very, very quickly. So notice that gives us 100 times m squared. And then we'll have plus... 2 times 10m times 5, but that's going to be 100m and then plus 25. But now notice that this guy right here is a multiple of 100. That's pretty easy to see. It's 100 times m squared plus 1 plus 25. So that means if we were to write this number in terms of its digits, it would have a bunch of leading digits. We don't know exactly what they are. And then it would end in a 25. But since it ends in a 25, we see that it ends in an even number and then an odd number. Thus, it does not end in two odd numbers. So we've cleaned up this final case. And then, like I said, maybe try this case as a homework problem if you'd like. And that's a good place to stop.